Welcome to Carly's Couch. Thank you for joining us today. We're in the 80s still of our episodes, almost to 100. So get ready. Put somebody on before we get to the 100th episode. Um, I am Lex Topia. Cece Fierce. (laughs) And today we're going to talk about visualization. And um, it's something that I feel like we mentioned before Mm -hmm. as a way to get to maybe one of our other topics um, in talking about meditation and peace and calm. Um, But today we're really going to go through it and talk about what that can really look like for you to start practicing. Yeah, it's something that you hear about from like life coaches and athletes and people like billionaires and people who make a lot of or who have made a lot of money. Um, like Jim Carrey is famous for saying like he wrote himself a three million dollar check and then he actually got that amount later. And that's like, OK, cool. But what really is it and how can it like be implemented into our lives as we move about from our day to day? Yep. But before we get into the episode, we do have a review that we're going to read from Lynn's A., and we just got this a few days ago. It says, love it. Five stars. Hey. I love y'all's dynamic on this show. This is one of the podcasts I consistently listen to, and I appreciate how much valuable content is offered week after week. I've been a listener since the beginning, so thank you for giving me topics to think about and spark discussions within my inner circle. Keep doing what you do. Thank you. Yeah, shout so, out to you. Yeah, and I want to say thank you, too, because even if you're – you know, somebody who's been listening for a while, we still appreciate if it takes you 80 episodes to leave us a review. So it's not too late. Um, leave us a review it's and five late, stars. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate y'all, especially since you've been here from the beginning. 80 episodes is a lot of episodes, but um, I personally love it because I feel like I can listen back to some and get advice from Lex and myself and also be like, man, I've grown in that area. And I just love like each week we challenge ourselves to talk about things that help us continue down this path to living our best life. So Lex, whenever I talk about visualization, like when I say that, what do you, what is visualization to you? Um, to me, it's thinking about your future mm-hmm. and, and envisioning seeing your future in your mind. So it's just thoughts of like what you want your future to be in your mind. Uh, I think it's the thoughts and the feeling of being in that place and seeing it and smelling it and hearing it. I like that. It's kind of putting yourself in that position, like where you want to be. So visualizing like in the future where you want to be or how you want something to turn out. Like when I think of visualization, I think a lot of when it comes to like sports, um, because that's when I first started learning about visualization. And so it's like, you know, envisioning yourself winning that race or performing or doing whatever in that exact way that you want to get that desired outcome. And that helps you, you know, perfect your practice. But visualization is really just a focus of your energy. It's a concentrated dreaming. And I really like that definition. Um, It's being able to construct our lives um, on the inside, from the inside out. So from our brains, from our thoughts, and then bringing it to life. And it's a tool to improve ourselves, our mindset, and working towards, you know, that ultimate goal or life that we want, whether it's a relationship, whether it's self things, um, any of that. I need to visualize these mic stands holding these heavy ass mics up. Heck yeah. (laughs) So if y'all are watching. We um, got some new podcast equipment. And sorry, I'm like getting this off course, but um, it came with these uh, other brand stands to help you get started, but we definitely need to get some heavier duty ones, but we're messing around with the mic. So sorry if you hear it in the audio. Um, But yeah, I, I like that idea of visualization, but why is it something that everyone doesn't just automatically think about doing? I think we do it. I just don't think we do it intentionally. Right. I, I, I don't think that that's something that everybody wakes up like, man, I'm going to visualize my day today. I would add to that. that I think most people visualize the negative of things. Oh, absolutely. Um, instead of being intentional about anything, they're actually visualiz- visualizing. And that if you stop to think about what you actually visualize the most is probably what you don't want to happen. Mm-hmm. And that comes in the form of worry, of fear, of worst possible outcome, like, you know, psyching yourself out before a big test or whatever. And I would 100% agree. So I think everybody visualizes. I think the way we're talking about it, using it as a tool to get towards what you want, as opposed to not or what you don't want is the change. Um, I guess for me, visualization fits in and transforming your thoughts into being. Yeah, I like that. That reminds me, there's a Bruce Lee quote when he talks about becoming like water. 
because water Mm -hmm. becomes whatever you put it into Mm -hmm. it becomes ice it becomes whatever river or bowl like whatever you put it in so it's not necessarily an act of trying to do something but rather becoming so i really like that and that's why i ask because i'm very intentional about language so yeah i definitely want to be able to change that language um so how I guess we can get into like how do we actually visualize it. And so now we know it's a tool to help us to help be able to see ourselves um, in places and feel whether it's like being more successful or whatever that goal is. Like what are some of those steps to actually visualizing and being intentional with it? Uh, Well, first of all, you have to have a goal. So being clear on what it is you are accomplishing, um, and whether that's a thing or or whatever it is. But again, I would say to make sure you go farther than that, to think about the why you want that thing and make sure that all of that is clear as well. So having those clear goals and knowing, you know, what you actually want. Mm-hmm. And I think if I, I like that because I think you can visualize the negative all day, but whenever it comes to putting yourself like where you want to be in the future, actually like being there and being able to see it and feel it and really transporting yourself, like becoming it, you have to be kind of clear on what that is. Um, Some of the advice, like as I was researching, is it said like start off if you are new to visualization as a tool, starting off with something that's a little bit easier. So maybe not 50 years down the road, I want my legacy to be this, this is my house. Maybe you start with something a little smaller and a little bit closer to you in the future so that you can, practice like getting there so they're saying like um choose something that's fairly easy to believe in that you feel is possible Mm -hmm. and then practicing with that first that way you don't have to fight against all the negative resistance in yourself and as you slowly integrate it the idea is that you'll be able to go a little bit deeper and push a little bit further What's the negative resistance in yourself? What do you mean by that? So uh, what I mean is let's say today's my first day of visualization and I want to be a billionaire um, but looking at my current circumstances, my b- brain and body are kind of like, well, eh, ah, not to say that you can't do it, not to say we're not cheering you on, but like when it doesn't feel real, it's a little bit questionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't believe it. Yeah, so you don't believe mm-hmm. it. So maybe starting off with something like, you know, I'm gonna make two hundred fifty thousand dollars next year. Like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. huh? That's that's reasonable. Like, I could I could do that. And I'm not telling you to like size your dreams down to something that's realistic because I hate that word. Um, but whenever you're starting as a tool with visualization, maybe that's something that you can do. So like for me, um, relating it to a very real thing, you know, my, my fastest mile time is around, it's like a sub seven mile. Haven't been there in a while. (laughs) Um, so my first one visualizing is like maybe like low sevens. Cause right now I'm probably like high seven. So I visualize like low sevens, how it's going to feel when I cross that finish line, when I do that and then slowly starting to bring it in as opposed to starting with, I'm running four minute miles a day. Mm -hmm. But is that something that you would stop to visualize before you do it? Or is it something that you've just been thinking about every day or like, how does visualization help you? Is it something you do before you're starting to work or before you're about to do that thing? So I visualize every day. Like I try to, um, whether it's like something small, like today is going to be an amazing day. Like, you know, things like that. Like how I'm going to feel accomplished at the end of the day. It sounds like setting an intention for the day though. What Mm -hmm. are you visualizing? Um, Like feeling accomplished, like getting all the things done, Mm -hmm. like making choices and moving from a place of love, like just being kind of clear on how I am in that day. But I also work for longer, um, like goals that are a little bit further out and things that aren't happening, happening immediately. Like I also visualize, but there's not like a consistent schedule for that for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Is there a schedule for you? Like on kind of like when you visualize things? Um, No, not at all. Um, And I don't do it intentionally. I don't think, I I mean, every once in a while, if I'm really thinking about something or like, maybe that's what my brainstorming is. Mm -hmm. No, not really. Not really. It's not. Um, if I do it, I'm very clearly trying to just take myself there to feel something, but I don't do it intentionally often. I don't think. Okay. Um, so first we started with a goal and then Lex had mentioned like being able to like feel it and see it and smell it. And so whenever you are working on visualization, whether it is something that's, you know, like your day or something a little bit longer term, making sure that in your head you can see this clear picture so you can feel exactly how you would feel after you accomplish that thing or whenever you reach that point and whatever it is. So being able to envision 
this scenario like exactly as it would be when you're in it mm. is the next step. Um, mm -hmm. Focusing on it often, do you have uh, like some kind of set schedule or something that you think people should focus on? Um, I think it depends on what you're trying to visualize. Uh, whenever I went to Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins, and like I said, a lot of life coaches, a lot of people use this as a tool all the time. He says to do it every single morning mm -hmm. for 30 minutes, every single morning. Why would it depend on what you're doing, though? Um, well, for, I'm saying that's a personal thing for me. Oh, okay. So, like, for example, every day if you want to env to vision, envision your day and how it, having a certain outcome and, you know, approaching it a certain way, like moving from love and growth and accepting the world as it is, like maybe that is like a 10-minute one you do every single morning. Mm -hmm. um, but Tony recommends doing the 30-minute one, and in it he has you envisioning – all of your long-term goals. He has you envisioning, you know, one year, five year, 10 year, how it feels when you're in that house that you want ultimately, when you reach those ultimate things. And so I don't think there's a wrong way. I think that we have to find the sweet spot for ourselves and whatever that is. I think what's most important is making sure you have them framed right. Because mm -hmm. I think you can still be repeating the same thing or, or feeling and be focused on the feeling you're trying to escape versus what you're trying to get to. And so I think really mm -hmm. the most important thing besides like how often you do it or um, the style and all of that is making sure that you're focused on the right thing. Um, so I, for me, I would say even recommend to write them down. Mm -hmm. um, and that way you can look at it and make sure like, all right, where is this coming from? What's my language that I used? And like really check them. Um, and that way you should have a feeling of positive energy around your visualizations when you do them. It shouldn't be f based off the pain you feel or based off the pain that you want to escape. Um, so putting positive energy into it and really like smiling and feeling it and, you know, enjoying that breeze or enjoying your house or whatever it is that you're visualizing because that's what makes it real. And that's the feeling that you'll realize is the same thing that you can have now as when you have that thing. So you don't have to wait. I think that's kind of the key to visualization mm -hmm. is that it shows you that you don't have to wait for that thing to feel this way. And so now if I feel this way, I'm not coming from a place of scarcity on this journey towards it. Can you give us an example of like what, like the framing? So like maybe using the same goal or the same thought and framing and then reframing it in a positive light. Mm. What's the thing you might visualize for? Um, getting... I'll, Oh, go ahead. go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. What's yours? What's I was going to say getting new clients, like meeting my like financial okay. goals. So you're visualizing and you're thinking about how how does it feel to have these new clients? I mean, I'm kind of asking you. Sorry. Oh, yeah. How does it I feel to like, have these clients? <laughs> um, I feel excited. I feel um, motivated. I feel like I'm in alignment. OK. And what else, though? If you have all these clients, what else is a part of that? Um. What else? Like, so I get all these clients, so it means more work. Um, it means more opportunities. It means that the things I'm doing are working, but also that I have to get my systems and stuff, make sure, like, they're good. Mm -hmm. And now you're coming from a place of, dang, I'm not there yet. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. not enough. And, and so, but I think that in visualization, it is important to think about it's more work, right? It's, it's not like, oh, man, I'm going to have more clients. And then, you know, every morning I'm going to wake up and be like, yes, I have 200 <laughs> clients. Like, you know, I feel crazy with two clients sometimes or with three, four. Like, it's not it, – you need a full picture. And then that also brings you back to, oh, this is who I need to be or this is what I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. But making sure that you you're framing it from that, how good it feels and what this feels like, but not to start it out like – um, I'm, I don't want to feel like I'm just spinning my wheels or I'm tired of, you know, working all day, but like, I don't have any other clients or I don't know how, like saying it from a place of what's wrong now or, or what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, and just being careful that you even listen to yourself, like maybe even do this out loud. Or for me, I, I write it. And in another episode, um, we did an exercise where I wrote mine down that way I could look at myself because to, to listen to somebody else or to, uh, hear what someone else has to say, you know, it's very easy for me to like be kind of clear and like hear past tense or hear, you know, this language or that language because mm -hmm. it's not my past stories, but they're yours. Yeah. And so 
to talk about it or to write it down, you kind of got to go outside of it and look at it. Um, but again, I think there's a lot more like self discovery and like questions you start asking yourself or things you start to uncover, like, Oh, I really feel like this or, um, you know, like things like, like to you having more clients means more work and having more clients means having systems and having more clients means a few other things that you said, not that they are or aren't, but just recognizing what you're associating with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And like this whole package. And so I think we can really now look at that and say, all right, but what do I want to visualize this to look like if I really have, um, X amount of clients. And quite frankly, maybe it's not the clients. Sorry, I'm like still talking, but okay. maybe it's the fact that you want to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. And even with that, you can feel like that with your one client or with um, no clients. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but the point to that is maybe that's the visualization isn't the clients. Maybe if there's a certain way you want to feel about, I want to have impact with people or if I want to feel mm -hmm. like I'm secure, how can how many ways can that happen besides just being like, oh, I need another client? Oh, I like that. Like there's a lot of other ways to make you feel what you're looking for without that thing. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like back to kind of at the beginning, like what is the really the why? And like what is it you're really trying to visualize? It's not Ooh. really the client. Like it's more than that, right? And so now we're open to how many ways can that happen? Because you might not get a client, but you might get a partnership with something or mm -hmm. a friend might say, hey, here's $10,000 or whatever, right? So there's lots of different ways for things to happen. And I think visualization is getting in that mode of feeling like you you feel that thing that you're really looking for. I love that. And it's so interesting. Um, you know, like I said, as someone who practices visualization like often and even leads people through visual visualizations and use it as a tool, like how quickly we got to the root of where things were coming from for me, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to like thinking like, oh, I have to expand my business so I can feel more secure, so I can feel validated, like all the things I've been doing are working, like, you know, so I can feel good about myself and just kind of un unwinding um, unraveling is probably a better word unraveling where all that need comes from and the same things for me because and I'm going to save this for the other episode because it might be like basically turn it into a part two kind of but um, you know in the same way I looked at my thoughts and I was looking at things like oh I'm starting to see different things to switch or to catch now um, or different ways to think about things or not be limited to things like there's so much limitation but you think you're not but you are even in saying like I have this is going to be more work or you know, I should be working hard. Like, even yeah. that is stupid, right? Like, because why are we trying to work hard to get to a place where you don't have to work hard? Like, so all <laughs> of it, like, compounds to, like, mm -hmm. oh, I could just be chilling now or I could, you know, be doing things differently mm -hmm. now and feeling those things now. This brings me back to um, the first, one of the first episodes we did when the pandemic started and you were talking about how, you know, some days it's, it would be nice to come home and, like, have someone – be able to celebrate, you know, with you or to, you know, just lay up mm -hmm. and watch TV or whatever. But you're like, but, you know, I'm really being intentional about just loving myself in those moments. Mm -hmm. And so not waiting on feeling loved or validated whenever someone else can do it, but really, you know, tuning inwards and seeing how that could happen for ourselves and not limiting it to, you know, I'm only going to feel, you know, loved and secure and worth something if I have a partner or if I get those clients or if I do these yeah. things. But really because just, you won't still be secure. No, you won't because You'll be the same a person with more clients. Or a partner or whatever. Yeah. And so it's really tuning into yourself and figuring out what that is and figuring out how you can do that on your own and also being open to possibilities of that being loved. Maybe it's from your friends. Maybe it's from family. Maybe it's from a mix of everybody else, except for the one thing that you think will give you what you want or need. Mm -hmm. That you're not really paying attention to, or you're working so hard over here that you're not realizing like there's money on the table right in front of you type thing. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of times you realize that when you just take a step back or when you chill or, you know, just notice the places where you're running in circles and might not have to. And so I want to um, actually, I'm putting Lex on the spot. She didn't know I was going to do this because I was going to lead us through kind mm -hmm. of a visualization moment or exercise. But after the conversation, I think. Were you about to say something? No, I'm listening. No, I was sorry. about to say <laughs> after the conversation, after this conversation <laughs> we just had, I think it might be beneficial to, you know, start with journaling and just some of these questions that we can ask ourselves to get to what the root of our visualization needs might be. How do I want to feel? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good one. How do I want to feel? Um, who do I want around me or what type of people do I want around me? Where do I want to be? Who do I want to impact? How do I look? Um, all of these kind of go back to how I feel, so maybe these lead you back to that first one. Mm -hmm. um, 
what's my what am I most proud of? What am I um I don't know, just like what things make you feel good and like where are you? How much you want to have or, or things you want to have maybe. Um, yeah. All of that. Yeah. And I, I think those are great questions to start with. I would add some if you're thinking about it. So, you know, when like in the future, like since we're visualizing, you know, like when I'm happy, what does my day look like? Like when I feel fulfilled, you know, how am I spending my time? What, do, what things do I see? Like when I wake up and I'm just grateful for a good night's sleep, when I wake up and I feel fulfilled in my purpose and I'm motivated and I'm excited, like what does that look like? Where are you waking up? What are you, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? Maybe what did you have for breakfast? Um, and I think some of those get back, it's all back down to like what do you feel? And like, you know, thinking about ways that that can be met. But I think this might also shed some light on things that, you might be scared to admit to yourself like that you might be passionate Mm -hmm. about like, man, I want to start my day with a run and then I paint for a few hours or whatever, like things that you might be scared to admit to yourself where that just might not come up in everyday conversation. So visualization is also an opportunity for you just to connect deeper with yourself. There's something you said that I feel like I need you to expound upon. Okay. Um, What was that last thing you were saying? Like, you don't want to admit to yourself. Yeah. Like, so I think that, um, visualization allows you to go deeper with things that might be beneath the surface that you just either wouldn't come up in conversation with friends or things that you might be scared to admit to yourself. Like maybe you are a creative deep down in your heart, but you are scared that if you become an artist that you're going to be poor for the rest of your life. And so Uh, you can't explore those. Okay. You can't explore that path. Okay. Yeah. And so I think that that you're being led by fear instead mm -hmm. of what you want to try to do. Exactly. It's very valid also to say, well, you know, I want to be a billionaire, but like, I don't, what is that? I don't know what that looks like, right? Like, I don't, how does that feel? Um, and keeping in mind that what you think it might feel like is, might not be based in anything. And therefore, like, there's still research and stuff to do. Like, you can, you can really look up people and look up the things and, you know, somebody who might be doing that job or have that thing. And see how their life is and, like, actually have something to visualize. Because I think at that point you realize that, you know, just because somebody has a billion dollars, I don't even want to say just because, but, you know, somebody who has a billion dollars probably doesn't wake up every morning like, yes, oh, my God, I'm hot. And, like, you feel like you think that's what that looks like every day. And that goes back to, again, the accuracy of what does that life look like? Because it's almost as though you're imagining that person doesn't have any problems or that person doesn't suffer or that person doesn't deal with things. Mm -hmm. And that person does and you do. And it's not that different from where you are as far as how it could feel because you're not going to wake up every day, like yelling and laughing, like because you have 10 million in the bank, like you're not, and you think you are, but you're not. (laughs) So it's like, damn, you can feel like that in your situation because it's almost like it's just an amplified version of some things, different things are going to be worse or bad still, more problems, Mm -hmm. and then some things are going to be better and great and good too, but it's still that same mix of life. Like, it's still just life. And so it's like bringing yourself to reality in that sense to where not like, oh, man, I can't dream about a billion dollars, but the fact that you really know how or you're really feeling like how that can feel and you're being okay with that now. Yeah, and more money more problems but realizing that even in those moments like it gives you an opportunity to say like maybe it's not the thing like Alexia was saying earlier maybe it's not the clients maybe it's not the billion dollars maybe it's not that relationship but it's that abundance that comes from you know having enough or it's that security or it's that validation and and just getting down to the root of it which I think is one of the biggest things um that I like one of the biggest benefits of visualization that I really like is it really helps you like drill down to what that thing is that you are, you know, working on or feel like you're lacking. Um, But scientifically, there's a whole bunch of benefits for visualization too. So for people who are not necessarily ethereal, you know, believers and all that, like scientifically, it helps reduce stress um, and helps you to remain more present um, in the moment. It increases your confidence. But again, I say that just goes back to, you know, at any point you can have increased confidence. It's just you changing your mind. And I know that sounds mad stupid and like frou-frou, but um, yeah, that's what visualization is doing is putting yourself in a place where you're good. And so now again, 
now you're good. So practicing that allows you to be in that place at any time. Yep. And it challenges you to become clear on what it is that you want. And I would even stretch that to say like what it is that you need. If you feel like, man, I need clients for this, but you, like we said, go through the visualization, go through the journaling, the voice notes, whatever it is, you get down to the root of what it is that you really want and feel like you need. And also helping you increase positive thoughts. Most of our thoughts are negative during the day. And so this is an opportunity to be intentional and change that like negative visualization that we're kind of auto programmed with just because of life and moving into more positive thinking. We um wow, we still have more. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that because I'm like scrolling up the page and like, oh, oh, other section. No, this is um <laughs> this is quick, but it's just we no, kind we're of having a good convo around it though. Y'all got spoiled with those few 30 minute uh episodes. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. We got shit to say. A few more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um we kind of walked through what visualization can look like. There are lots of resources and I challenge you to kind of research and try to find some that work for you. But there are different like types and times of visualization. Like one, like I kind of already discussed is morning visualization. So in your head, just practicing creating the day, like how you want it, like imagining yourself like winning or even just being surrounded by positivity and love. And like, like I said, that's a choice. And then also, um, I challenge you to visualize yourself, visualize yourself dealing with tough moments, but holding grace and space and forgiveness and kindness for yourself and everybody else involved. Um, so Carly talks about how like in driving, <laughs> I've told her that I, when I'm on the highway, I don't ever really get, um, what's it even called? Road rage mm -hmm. like that. Because when I'm driving, I almost, like visualize I guess I visualize I'm visualizing we're all connected and so it's almost like these invisible strings keeping all the cars connected and so I'm I'm paying attention all around me and as this car starting to come over you know like I'm already like in motion and like it's smooth and as I'm going over there going over and you know there's no issues because I'm kind of looking in sync with everything and, and feeling everybody in flow um and I guess maybe that could be like a type of visualization. You have to go on that and how you, what you see out of that. But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm envisioning us all on one. And so we kind of are because, uh, you know, I'm just like paying attention in that way and being present to the movement. Yeah, I think it is a visualization, like not even intentionally thinking like, I'm trying to visualize this. But when you said that, I was like, wow, I've never thought about that. And not that I have road rage, but. <laughs> I don't not have road rage sometimes, um, especially here in L.A. <laughs> People be driving me crazy. But mm -hmm. ever since she said that, I've been much more mindful in the car. And I think that in moments that challenge us, there's always a greater opportunity of growth. And so just envisioning, you know, like arriving safely, arriving, everybody moving together. We're all flowing. That's something I hadn't really ever thought of. And I think it's important to do that considering um, not currently at the moment, but a lot of us spend a lot of time in the car moving from one place to another. And so it's a chance for us to change that and to change our relationship with it. Another one um, I mentioned a few times, but performance, I think that you can optimize your performance with visualization, whether it's, you know, before a big presentation, before it's before a speaking engagement, before you're teaching a class, before you, you know, go run or work out or whatever, like just changing your relationship and being able to see yourself perform in the ways that you want to. Um, and then the last one, a great time also uh, to visualize and to practice these things is at nighttime. So like you're setting yourself up for success the next day, or perhaps you had a tough conversation that didn't go the way you wanted it to. And maybe you can envision yourself responding with grace or, you know, reacting from a place of love as opposed to triggers or projection or whatever might have happened that you might not be okay with and allowing yourself that space to visualize it and having a new opportunity the next day. I do do that a lot. I um, have a lot of conversations with other people in my mind and I, and then I stop to do, say something different or, or think more about what I would have said and like, why would I say that? And then I like dig in again on myself. Um, or I like think of what I would say and why or why that's a better choice, even though that's not my first automatic reaction. And it actually does make a really big difference when I talk to people because now um, it's like I've, I've seen like the different ways that the conversation can go based on where I'm coming from. If I'm coming from a space of love versus if I'm coming from a place of fear. And I would also use that to make sure that I would try not to reach out to people. I call them if I was coming from that place. Mm. So making sure that it would be pure in my communications, I guess. 
I like that. I did that today, actually, and I thought about you. Because <laughs> I think you're very thoughtful with how you communicate with people. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's also why I wanted to add that on there. Um, anything else for visualization? Yeah, I don't think so. Man, super hype about this week's shout out, per usual. Um, it is the Glass Skin Company, Glass Skin Co. Um, the links to Instagram and the website will be up. But um, my friend Trinice, she is a civil engineer, an environmental engineer, and a chemist. And she just has a lot going on. And so I don't want to like undersell her, but I want to make sure I put all of those things because she's super accomplished for being especially so young, but in just in general. Um, but she started a quality skincare line that is accessible and easy to understand. It's as simple as that. She makes sure you know what ingredients there are. She puts a lot of skincare tips, um, and it's a black woman-owned company. So y'all definitely check her out, support. She's in LA, so local black woman-owned company. Super dope, and I love all her little tips about you know why you do these things or why you do this or what this exact ingredient does and the importance of it because I don't think a lot of skincare companies are as clear. Mm-hmm. transparent with what's in there mm-hmm. and so, why and she launched her schedule launch was right at the beginning of the pandemic and she kept it moving and it's been cool to see um she also has i think hand sanitizers and um some masks like the like appropriate ones like on the her site that you can also buy <laughs> and our jazz 95 whatever they are but yeah <laughs> um so definitely check her out glass skin company They're not yarn <laughs> no, she's not crocheting masks. These They're are not, like the medically efficient right. ones. They'll actually protect you. <laughs> um, good. Congratulations. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and now is a really good time to be into products and drop shipping and all that. Mm-hmm. FYI. Um, so this week, our question is, dun, 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 dun. what do you spend the most time thinking about? Man. Um, <laughs> love. I think I spend, not even I think, I spend the most time thinking about ideas and self-improvement and ways to give back and also people that I love, like on a very real thing. What about you? Um, I had to think through a couple things to get down to the real for me. And then I would say my real is I think I spend the most time thinking about what I can do as far as like, literally like what can I do right now how can I be busy or how can I be doing something right now I think that's Mm -hmm. what I spend the most time thinking about is what can I do right now so what do y'all spend the most time thinking about at Carly's couch at CC fierce at Lextopia hit us up let us know and also leave us a review please if you feel so inclined five stars only though of course and thank you for listening we hope to see you oh shit (laughs) thank you for listening and we will see you next week Bye, y'all.